Hello out there, and today we've got part one of the D2 testing video, and in this part we're going to be talking about the knives themselves that are used, uh, the different knives that we have for a control group, also talking about the parameters of the cut tests themselves that I'm going to be doing, and then part two will actually be those tests on camera, and also any analysis that there is of this whole experiment. All right, and the reason why I decided to do this experiment, if you didn't see the introductory video, man, it, it was like a month and a half, two months ago now, but uh, if you didn't see that video, the, the whole point of this, the reason why I wanted to talk about D2 was that I've noticed over the past couple years that D2 has just become more and more accessible. You know, it's been, become more affordable as well, and you're seeing it in just a whole lot more budget kind of friendly knives. Whereas when I got into knives, it was something that, was a little bit more of a premium steel, you know, you, you saw it in more hundred and hundred and fifty dollar blades, you know, especially like the ones made in the USA by Benchmade and um, Kershaw was using it a lot too. Uh, but now we're seeing it in stuff like this Steel Will Modus, which is a forty dollar knife, and then some other knockoff kind of stuff that says that it has D2 as well. And so it just got me to thinking, is D2 the same across the board? Or are these manufacturers using a different quality of D2? Is the heat treat different? What is it about it? And can I test these knives against each other to see what that quality is? And in that first video, which I will link to down below, in that first video, I got a ton of really good feedback, excellent comments, and some really good suggestions as well. And, you know, I'd already been sort of thinking along this line, but but your feedback really made me understand that a, conclu a conclusive result, excuse me, is just not going to be possible here. You know, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to do this test, and we're going to draw whatever conclusions we can from it and, and just have a lot of fun with that analysis and, and see if anything interesting happens over the course of the test. But there's just too much in terms of variables that can really impact how one knife performs versus another for us to be able to say that anything that we're going to see is is conclusive. You know, when it comes to the, the heat treat, like I said, which which we have no way of really knowing, or the uh, the blade grind, or the edge geometry, so many different things will go into how a knife performs on any given day. So, yeah, I just want to make sure that we're very clear about that, that this is going to be more of just a, a fun experiment than something that is actually trying to be all that scientific. Though, like I said, we will be able to draw some conclusion from it. Nothing definitive. All right, so uh, now that that's out of the way, I do need to thank Mr. Jeff Jewell, who really helped me out with this. Uh, I sent him all of my D2 knives, and he sharpened them all up, and then he sent me back all of those knives with two more, this Rat Model 1 and the Browse Bionic XL. So we have a total of seven knives in D2. Those seven knives, and I'll just start to show them here, are the Boker Kihon. We have a Tucson. I don't know the model, but... You can see just beautiful edges that he's put on them. And we have the Mini Griptilian in D2. We have that Steel Will Modus. We have the Rat Model 1 in D2. Here is the Browse Blades Bionic XL, which actually, guys, I was expecting the XL to be a very large knife, but it's actually smaller than the, uh, the ZT that I reviewed uh, the other day. And I would actually like to have one of these. It's actually it's actually not too big for uh, for my preference. So pretty cool to find that out. And then this is a Shirogorov like copy of a Shirogorov custom. It actually does resemble the uh, the Sinkovich ZT0460 as well, but just a little bit of a different thing. Uh, but this one supposedly is in D2 also. And so I sent all these knives to Jeff Jewell. He sharpened them up, sent them back, and he sharpened them by hand. Uh, uh, he freehand sharpened them which was very neat, and he got to actually get a good feel for the steel that way. I think a little bit better than maybe you would if you were using a uh, like a sharpening system. And he sharpened them to, he at first the idea was to try to get them all at the same angle, like right around the same inclusive angle. And then there were a couple that just are a little bit different, a little bit off from uh, what the rest of them are. And so I'm going to show you a paper with all the information right now. So... You can see this is the inclusive angle of the D2. The Rat Model 1 at 27.5 degrees, Tucson at 29.5. The Shirogora Fake, which is this one right here, at 29.5. Steel Will 30.1, and then uh, Boker Kihon 39.5. We have a number of different mini grips, and I'll talk about why in just a second. Those are all right around the 40 to 40.5 uh, range. 42.4 for the 440C one, 
and then at the browse blades is at 40.5. Now, uh, Jeff did adjust some of these, you know, when, when he was sharpening by hand, he did, you know, try to get them as similar as they could. Um, sometimes though, with what you see from the factory, it just doesn't work out that way. And I think that these two up here, the Rat 1 and the Tucson, are sort of more indicative of a, a closer uh, edge to what you would see from the factory. And so you have to keep in mind that maybe if you were to buy any of these knives, uh, they have been sharpened to... Uh, somewhat different edge than what you could potentially see when you buy them, you know, off a shelf. So the performance could, again, could potentially be different, and that is just one of those variables that we're going to be dealing with. Now, the reason for the different mini grips is that I came up with, after I filmed that first video, I came up with the idea of just having a control group because I do have the 556 mini griptilian in a bunch of different steels. And so what I'm gonna be doing is doing the same tests as with the, as with the D2 uh, with all of these other mini grips as well. And this is a 440C mini grip, this is 154CM, and this is an M4. And so we'll have the mini grips to sort of test against each other as well to keep as a control group because obviously we have the exact same model, so the grind is essentially the same. The, uh, the edge geometry, as you saw, is very, very similar on uh, the four of those. So uh, the results there will be a little bit uh, pretty compelling as well, I, I think and hope. All right, so that is everything when it comes to the knives. So the way that I'm going to be doing the testing and the actual test that I'm going to be doing is going to be basically just a rotating round after round after round. So each knife will do the same test, uh, will be performing the same task over the course of each round. So I'm going to start with like the first round is going to be a whole bunch of cardboard. I'm not going to show cardboard on camera today, but I have a ton of it. Um, so the first round will be like cardboard and then some of this kind of, um, of bonded rope and then also half inch manila rope. And so there'll be a number of cuts, you know, the same amount of cuts, obviously. And as we go through that, you know, after a few rounds, we'll add other things into the testing. And after each round, I'll be testing each knife to see if it can still slice paper. And then when it can't, it's done. And that's sort of how it's going to work. And so that's what I will be um, remarking on and interrupting the, the testing for in, in the video that you'll see next. So as we progress into later rounds, I'll be bringing in like other material like, um, like soda cans. I have a whole bunch of extra like garden hose. So just other materials as we get going further and further to, to see which knife at the end of the day, like hold its edge the longest. So again, should be a, a pretty interesting thing. And guys, I know we're eight minutes into a, a knife test video that doesn't have any actual testing, but I do want to just take a minute to, to show and express my appreciation, my newfound appreciation to any channel that is out there that does a whole lot of cut tests. The reason, the primary reason that this video has taken so long to produce and, and actually get working is that I really struggled with coming up with how to do this test and get it right the first time. You know, I don't have the, the technological um, insight or ability to, to do a whole lot of editing. And I also don't have the sharpening capability to get these knives back to this level if I were to screw something up. So basically the test has to be as perfectly planned out as possible. I have to have like the camera set up in the perfectly right spot because once I start, I can't undo that. Does it, hopefully that makes sense. You know, and, and so anyway, this, this, um, this video, this whole process has given me a ton of appreciation for channels like Cedric and Ada Outdoor and, you know, the other channels out there that we rely on for, for cut tests that we get that really good information from, you know, that I sort of, always took for granted and didn't really uh, give them the, the respect that, that they deserve. But man, just doing this, and, and again, I haven't even done it yet, and it still might not go particularly well, so who knows? But um, but just the the planning of it is just, I mean, it's, it's definitely taken me outside my comfort level, and I have a ton of respect for anyone who's able to do this and execute it and get us that material, um, you know, on YouTube. Um, you know, as, as nicely and accurately as they do. So anyway, guys, there's that. Again, special thanks to Jeff Jewell for, uh, for his help with all this. Any questions, comments, complaints, suggestions that you have, definitely let me know. But the next video that you'll be seeing uh, will, will most likely be that testing video, if not the next one, then the one after that. So the next few days, we'll have this wrapped up and we will see where it goes. Your predictions, let me know down below. Really interested to hear from you. Take care and have a good one.